Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Uh, everybody's got to listen to this episode. I don't care who you are, where you are, you've got to hear what we're going to talk about today because it's all about putting the power back in the patient's hands. I can't tell you how many times I have worked with women who have no idea what lab work their doctors have done for them or if they did get their labs done, what those lab results were. And it is one of the top tools that you can utilize in order to regain your health, lose the weight, whatever it is that you're facing right now. Knowing your lab work is one of the top priorities that every single woman needs to have and man, but here we're talking about the ladies. So my guest mm-hmm. today is at one time, he was a fellow Canadian, but he's, he's ditched yes. the Canadians. At heart, I still am. Are you? Okay, Canadian. well, I hope so. Yes. All right. I was just telling him, for those of you listening, you could go check out the, the video cast on YouTube. Dave and I have very similar hairdos today and we're just like, wow. It's really, we must it's be really creepy. We creepy. must have a connect. It's creepy. It's creepy. Totally I was saying, creepy. I never wear my hair to the side and today I did. It's, it's you got the so short side today. and yep. you got the <laughs> length on top and that's my look. So we, we were like on the same level, like before we even got on this show, like when we woke up this morning, there was yes. some kind of quantum entanglement that said, this is how you should do your hair so that you match with your podcast uh, host today. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad I didn't wear a white shirt. That would have been really funny. All right. Oh, this totally. is Dave, everybody. This is Dave Korsunski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David has 15 years experience working for industry leading technology firms as an avid health enthusiast enthusiast and navigating a health crisis of his own. He recognized an opportunity to build a software solution that makes it easier for anyone to take control of their health through centralized, easy to understand data called heads up. So Dave, what the heck is heads up? Let's hear it. Well, um, I think you kind of touched on it at the beginning of the show, and I, I had a health condition I was working on. Uh, it was it was a few things going on, but I'd also I'd never been obese growing up, but I was never lean. Okay. And I also noticed that even though I trained harder and, and was more health conscious than all my friends, I I never had the results outward bound in terms of my my body composition. And uh, I, at one point, I also went through an extremely stressful period in my corporate job where I started having symptoms that were diagnosed as maladaptive stress. Oh. And, um, you know, you just, I, I had insomnia and um, I had, uh, I just had a lot of unpleasant issues. And, and what was happening was my stress levels had reached a point where my body was not able to process them in healthy ways. And so they were starting to manifest in unhealthy ways, physical symptoms of stress. Like what? Can you, know, you tell, like, tell us about that? Like uh, what exactly what I was had, happening? I had a few, um, you know, the first time I had what I believed to be a panic attack uh, yeah. was, was when I was at work in a highly stressful meeting. And if you've ever had one, it's almost like this out of body experience and you're just not really sure what the heck is going on. And it was awful. Yes. Uh, I've had I it mentioned once to you, and it was horrible. Yeah. I, I had about four or five of those episodes in the span of a few months. And mm-hmm. um, I called my sister. I mentioned to you she's a naturopathic doctor in Winnipeg. And she said, you know, it's probably stress, but just go get it checked out. So I did. And sure enough, it was it was stress. And, you know, I went to my regular doctor and they ran the blood work. And, of course, I was told I was fine. And um, that just really wasn't acceptable. And so the first thing I did was I called all my doctors past and present. And in the U.S., by law, they are required to send you your records within 30 days. So they all shipped me this, my records, PDF files, paper records. I had a stack of junk. And uh, what I did on a rainy Sunday was I put all those blood tests into a spreadsheet. And that was the aha moment. Because I was able to see patterns in certain markers that not even my doctor could see because they didn't have access to my history. They only see that little window of when you're their patient Mm -hmm. and they have nothing else for the other 40 years of my life. And immediately what I could see was, wow, some of these numbers have been trending in the wrong direction for 10 years. And nobody had even mentioned that to me because no one in the medical system had that type of visibility into my data. And that's when I realized that 
I'm, I'm not a medical person. I'm a technologist. So it's not like I knew the, the, the biochemical processes behind all these tests. But I knew enough to see that these numbers were trending in a direction that could lead to something serious. And when I realized that I had more of that information than my doctor did, that was like the holy crap moment where I'm like, okay, this is going to be life-changing for people. And at that same time was when all of this incredible health technology was being made available to individuals. You can put an Apple Watch on and it's measuring every heartbeat. It's measuring your sleep quality. It's measuring your respiration rate. You have ways to track your nutrition now through technology, ways to measure your blood pressure. So you can measure your day-to-day lifestyle and make changes and see those changes in numbers. And then you can see how that changes your test results. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to be medically trained. You don't need to be technologically savvy to do this. So I left my job and have been building this product for the last three and a half years. And that's, that's, wow. that's the journey that we've been on. And so it's a software? It's an app that you use on your phone or on okay. your computer. You can sign in on your web browser, just like yeah. you'd sign into your bank's online portal. Yeah. And when you sign in, instead of looking at your spending transactions, you're looking at your health statistics. And then you have that same thing on your phone, just like some banks, you can download their mobile app and look at your spending, pay a bill, that is now happening in healthcare. You know, healthcare is probably 15 years behind finance in terms of technology. So think about how things were before online banking. You had to go to the bank and wait in line and talk to a teller. That's kind of how a lot of the conventional medicine world still is. You got to go to the doctor and sit in the office and ask them for your results. And if you're lucky, you'll get a stack of papers in the mail. That's, mm -hmm. that's like where banking was before the internet. <laughs> and now healthcare is coming around to where consumer finance is. So like you can log into websites that can analyze a, a stock that you own in 50 different ways and give you some incredible buy. So, so health is now really starting to come to where these, these finance tools are. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're a, we're a web and mobile app to do a lot of those same types of things for your health data. So like, hey, I got a million bucks in the bank, but um, I've got signs of serious metabolic disease. That's not so good. You got a million bucks in the bank and your, your blood work looks stellar and you get the rest of your lifestyle dialed in. You know, now you're winning. Yeah. And so how does the information get into that app? Like, do we, as a, as the client have to go out and collect all of the data from all the, all the different doctors we've had and put it all together and put, upload it into the app ourselves? Yeah. So in the United States that happens electronically. So Karen would create an account and Karen would search our database of doctors and we would ask you for your login details to that doctor's portal, just like you have a login for the bank. And once you give us those credentials, we store them in a encrypted and, and non-readable format for humans, and we synchronize that data electronically. Now, in Canada, those same systems are just now starting to open up. And in the next two to three years, we'll probably be able to do the same thing in Canada. But the other part of it is the data you're collecting at home. And even if you're in Canada, you can still sign in, connect up your Apple Watch, enter your blood sugar. You don't need uh, Bluetooth devices. You can enter all of this stuff manually. We have a beautiful dashboard, which I'm happy to share here if you, if you sure. put these on YouTube. But just sign in and start measuring your blood sugar and getting your metabolic health under control and maybe taking some waist circumference measurements once a month because the scale is just kind of a, a red herring when you're like, trying to do weight loss. and and uh, maybe you want to track things like your sleep analysis and um, blood pressure. So everybody measures different things. We have Tour de France athletes on here. Yeah. And they're measuring like lactate threshold and VO2 max and like oh, wow. HRV, yeah. like physical recovery metrics to make sure they're not overtraining. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum is someone who maybe is working with a chronic illness. And their 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 dashboard is set up with metrics related to their chronic illness. So it's all very customizable, but uh, it, it, an individual would just set up the metrics. So we'll sync with Fitbit and Garmin and Apple Watch and 
in Canada, though, for the medical tests, you, you do need a copy of the results, yeah. and um, hopefully you can get those uh, in Canada. Typically, you'll get a PDF or some paper records. And uh, there's a few things you can do. One is we've built the system so that you can enter those results yourself. And maybe there's 30 tests on the report, but you're like, you know, I really only need to keep an eye on my hemoglobin A1C and uh, my HDL and my LDL. So you just pick the three, the three tests that you really care about, and you sign in and you punch them in. It takes five seconds. Um, we also have a data entry service where all you have to do is securely upload the PDF, and we'll transcribe all the test results oh, out wow. of the paper. And now that's when you upload three or four PDFs, now you'll see the trends. Yeah. And that's where it gets really powerful. So we will do the data entry for you. It's a small fee. We don't make a lot of money on it. It's kind of like a break-even thing. Yeah. Uh, or you can just do it on your own. So in Canada, it's a little bit, a little bit more manual for the medical records, but all of the lifestyle integrations uh, work the same. Yeah. Now, and I just want to share with the listeners why this is so key. Because some of some of you might be thinking, yeah, do I really, I'm not going to understand what I'm seeing. Like, do mm -hmm. I really need to see this? Let me tell you that, yes, you do. I can't tell you how many times, Dave, that I've had a client where I've said, you know, what was your latest blood, your fasting blood glucose numbers that your doctor tested? Oh, yeah. I don't think he's tested that. And here's a woman who is 50 pounds overweight, very clearly she's got some metabolic syndrome going on. She clearly has blood sugar issues going on. I can just tell by looking at someone now. And I'm thinking, why has your doctor not done this? And I'll say, has he tested your hemoglobin A1C, which is just a three month look at your blood sugar? Mm, I, I have no idea. And so vitamin I'll, D, right, you know, vitamin all these D. super critical markers that everyone oh, needs to know. Cholesterol. like, And here's the thing. I'll have these people. I just had a woman recently who I said, okay, you need to go find this out. She was actually, she only was about maybe 20 pounds overweight. She, she looked healthy. I said, you know what? Let's get, let's get these labs done with your doctor and you can send it to me. And she's like, you know what? Why don't I just do it myself? I said, sure, go get a blood glucose monitor test it yourself. And she's like, Oh, you know what? I went to the pharmacy. They said, I'm fine. And she gave me her uh, numbers face palm. Yeah. and she <laughs> was 0 0.1, 0 0.1 away from being type two diabetic. And she thought she was in the clear. And I'm like, this is just it. Is your doctor probably has seen that and yep. didn't tell you because you're not type two diabetic yet. Yeah, they but wait. you're like point one away them. from yeah, you're point one so, away from being on, on medication. So on the test range, is the, the test report's not going to flag that. You're going to show yeah. up as in the normal range, yes. which yeah. is terrifying because you're like one step away from a serious diagnosis, and yeah. that's why people need to get educated. Yeah, another one, another very big one, and so many people will relate to this is thyroid numbers. Thyroid labs are huge. Constantly yeah. misinterpreted. A doctor will say, Oh, you're fine when they're once again 0.1 away from being flagged as hypothyroid. 0.1, which yep. means you know what, you're hypothyroid. <laughs> you need to be in the upper yeah. third of the range of your free T3 in order to feel better. Like that's what you would is yeah, preferred. And, and lose and a weight. Doctor and, won't tell you just, that and lose weight. Exactly. Yeah, sleep properly and regulate mood and and have some libido. Yeah. Yes. So yes. that's a lot of the work we do actually is um, with optimal ranges. So yeah. a lot of the health coaches on our, on our platform will come in and they'll override those default ranges and they'll actually set ranges that will flag things much earlier. Wow. And that's a really, that's really great. important feature. Uh, and, and then again, I don't know if this is available in Canada. Maybe you can tell me, but but here in the U.S., you can order your own tests. Like if your doctor won't run it for you, like a lot of doctors will say, "Well, there's no evidence or or justification for me to order that test. There's no code I can bill against." You know what I mean? So here we can just go order them and like get some pro preventative, proactive testing done as well. Um, like I can test thing, I can do saliva hormone testing. If, if certain practitioners will have stuff online that can be ordered through a private lab, that kind of stuff. But as far as, you know, the, the panels that maybe a medical doctor would test for, no, you can't yeah. just go in and pay to have it done. 
Um, luckily, yeah. actually, most of my listeners, most of my clients are from the States. I have about 80% yeah. based in the States. So a oh, lot of cool. the listeners, thank goodness, they are, they are in the States and have access to um, getting their own lab work, which I think is amazing. I think it's going to just like, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next 10 years to healthcare as far as the patient taking that control. Um, and you can tell me that too. Like, what do you guys predict with this software even? Like, how is this going to change things? Well, I think that we're starting to see a lot more people get engaged with their health. Mm -hmm. And that is a win for humanity. And for every person that even some simple stuff like, like tracks their sleep for a week with a good device or gets an Apple watch and starts to track things like physical activity or gets a device that can help them look at their stress, like measuring heart rate variability. Everybody is starting to enjoy these devices and enjoy the notion of having some metrics on their health. It's actually pretty fun because you can, first of all, have some accountability. You can see how it's almost rewarding when you start to say, okay, I'm making some changes and it's showing up in the numbers. So I think Apple's Absolutely. probably sold 60 million watches. Uh, companies like MyFitnessPal have hundreds of millions of registered users tracking their food. So we're in this era now where people have access to this really, really wonderful information. So I think we're starting to see that become mainstream. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, the more people that are paying attention to their health numbers, even if they're just some novelty numbers, you know, like steps, I think that's a win. I also think that a lot more people now are starting to get educated on their own and they're starting to find ways to approach their health that their regular doctor might not necessarily be even legally allowed to recommend because it's not part of the standard of care. And there's amazing podcasts like yours. There's amazing communities online where people are finding other like-minded individuals dealing with the same thing. And they're saying, hey, well, for me, I tried this and this, and it turned out that I had some heavy metal exposure. It turned out it was a thyroid thing my doctor missed. It was, it's a genetic mutation I have that's preventing me from breaking down fats. So people have incredible access to information, and there's a just they're starting to be this whole community of, of people who are doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. And then the third part of it is people who are now going to doctors who are – what I would call cash pay doctors. And they are counseling you on things like subclinical thyroid, microbiome, detoxification, uh, really. And there's also uh, coaches that are working with you, people who are actually really healthy and want to biohack their way to like really, really high performer status. So we're, we're focused on the coaches and the people who really want to do this outside of the, um, allopathic or traditional medicine model. And, and that's where we see it all going. I think the vision for our software is to make it as sophisticated as possible. So we, we can just tell you the things automatically that might be a little bit less obvious. Uh -huh. Like, Hey, when, when you eat, a, when you ate this meal, you know, you, you, you have um, a much higher fasting blood sugar the next day. Or when you get to bed by 8.30 p.m., you know, your blood pressure is 20 points lower the next day. Oh, wow. And, you know, these are known patterns that are out there. So, like, if all you got to do is connect a few things and we can surface these amazing insights for you, that's the next evolution of where we want to go. What I love is it'll help people not to lie to themselves. Like, if you can get that precise, you know, it's like – oh, this, this bowl of ice cream, it doesn't really matter or whatever it is. Or no, lack then, of sleep then, is then huge, the, right? Like, oh, I can run on six hours of sleep, but then your little software is going to tell them, ah, no, you can't because here's, what's, you're, you're, here what's, here's what happened. Yeah, your heart rate variability, your blood pressure and your blood sugar are all higher on those nights where you get five hours of sleep. And, you know, one of the innovations I'm most excited about, this is not something we're building per se, but I know companies like Apple are working on this, where the Apple Watch or, or some non-invasive device is able to continuously measure your blood sugar. Because yes. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say like 85% of the chronic health issues out there that we're dealing with at some level are caused by deranged blood sugar. Yeah because of the crap that we're eating, you know, soda and fries and white bread. 
whatever. And so if people, and that's not something people can feel. You don't necessarily feel your blood sugar going up. So if you can just get some immediate biofeedback on, oh, I ate that and my blood sugar went off the charts. So the ability to make that blood sugar monitoring available, people are now going to see what a glass of orange juice does to their blood sugar. They're going to see what a donut does to their blood sugar. And they're not going to need an implantable continuous glucose monitor. That's going to be one of the biggest impacts on, on population health. I think that, that we can, well, I, I would make every client days. get that, I think, because I, I even like the ones that are the, the ones that you can continuously wear right now. I do have people wearing those and they say that it's amazing yeah. what you get from that, but they could yeah. take that information and put it into your app and watch the trends, totally. right? Yeah. And I tell people, watch you know, come down, yeah. carb tolerance testing is one of the best ways to figure out what your weight loss code is, which I talk a lot about. Yeah. Every one of us yeah. is different. Some people can actually eat the bowl of ice cream and get no blood sugar response or very little. Some people, yeah. it goes off the charts. And then yeah. that same it's person can eat rice and it doesn't bother them. So knowing totally. what your carb tolerance is will help you nail down a diet that's going to work for you, right? And being able to see that I think is going to be so key. Now, Dave, what about the kind of downfall of people misdiagnosing themselves? Um, because they have access now. Like I remember my hemoglobin, uh, no, it wasn't my hemoglobin. Something was way off. Like I got flagged and my doctor never said anything about it. And it's happened mm -hmm. twice now. And I'm like, why are they not telling me that this is flagged? And I asked my naturopath, yeah. Like, yeah, it's not really a big deal. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm like, I can just imagine people that would be like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Or start misdiagnosing, or do I have cancer? Or do I have, and that fear coming in because they know too much now. Yeah, well, I think there's always the risk that people misinterpret information. And that applies to all forms of data, not just, not just health data. Um, if you flip that around, you could say, well, maybe this person is going to get um, concerned about the data, but but the alternative is they is they have no data at all, and that that could be equally bad. So I think there's there's obviously going to be a response when when we see something that we think might indicate there's something wrong with us. That's just human nature. No software can change that. Mm -hmm. But what we need to remind people is you now have these numbers. At least you have them. They're not trapped in some dusty file folder in your doctor's office. And now you can go do a little bit of research on those numbers. And, you know, one thing I learned the hard way was never to ask Dr. Google because yeah. that is the fastest way to like unnecessary anxiety. <laughs> no, call your health coach that you trust and ask them about the number. At least you have the friggin' number. So that is the best way when you're not sure where the best thing to do is ask your health professional and show up with your data, ask some good questions and they'll give you good answers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think this is super key too to see, like if you can pull up, like you said, with your own health problems, if you could pull up your health records from the time you were born to your current age, like people don't think that that has much reference. But one of the questions I always ask people were is, you know, did you have a lot of antibiotics growing up? Were you breastfed? Oh like things like that. And they'll be like, oh yeah, I had chronic ear infections all the time. And I, I think I was on antibiotics. I'm not sure what it was. And I'm like, yeah, well, you probably were. No wonder you have gut problems today. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I interviewed Dr. Grace Liu on this show. She's a microbiome doctor, and she cited a stat where the average person in, in this country has been on uh, over 18 rounds of antibiotics mm. by the time they reach 21. And um, I wish I had all of that history. You know, my, my childhood was in Winnipeg, and who knows where that doctor is now. But I can go back to 2005 in my Heads Up profile right now and see all my blood tests. And I just moved to um, Scottsdale, Arizona. I haven't even found a doctor yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to go find some doctor and, and they're not going to have any of that data. They're going to have zero. They're going to have the tests they run for me at that moment in time. And um, that's it. So at least I can see back to 2005. And um, I tried to get some of my records from Canada, but I had just left too long ago. But you could imagine now where what the way it, ideally would work is like right from those first immunizations yes. as an infant, 
you have the medical history. That is, man, if we could, if we could somehow find a way in pediatrics to get that, that captured, because that's the data we need 30, 40, 50 years down the road to figure out a lot of stuff. Yes. Um, I was just listening to a podcast yesterday and they were saying how there's never been um, a health safety study done on any vaccines ever. Uh, Viagra had yeah. a 10 year study. Vaccines, they have not done it because they think it's unethical to um, have somebody not be vaccinated to do the study, which is a bunch of baloney. But yeah. they were saying like they're trying to collect this data to see how many kids did have a reaction after they were vaccinated and, and kind of following up with them for, for years to see if there was a trend. So something like what you're doing, if, the, if, if everybody had that app and we all started doing it with our children from the time that they were born, that we were putting in this information, even if it was us by hand, not even by a doctor, but just could put in well, you know what? I did notice some differences in my kid after they were vaccinated or after they had this infection or after they had this antibiotic or this, whatever mm -hmm. it was, you could put that data in and how helpful would that be 20 years down the road? I just talked to a guy the other day who was having all these health problems and he said, they started after I had my hep B shot when I was in grade nine or whatever it was. And he, yeah. and he said, I don't, he said, they thought I had lupus. And he said they could yeah. never figure out what was wrong with me. All I know was I had just had my hep B shot. And I'm like, isn't that like, these are all the things that we could be pulling together and solving these chronic health issues that were, that are just like crazy right now. And, and I think too, like just to mention this to everybody else is how great would it be to be able to see and track your progress? Because a lot of my listeners, they're tracking their progress by the, what their scale is saying. Yeah. And a lot of the time we don't even realize that, Hey, our blood sugar has gone down. Our cholesterol has gone down. All these markers that you could be watching that may be correcting themselves and getting a lot better before all the weights off. And so it could yep. give people motivation. They could see if supplements are working, like if certain supplements yep. are correcting their blood sugar or not, yep. like just things like that. Taking hormones, you know, if you're taking bioidentical hormones, are your hormones getting better since you started taking it? Like, this yep. is immeasurable. This is amazing. That's exactly why we created it. I, I was working on a thyroid issue. And we, were, we were running the full thyroid panel and we were looking at some special, like, like you said, T3, T4, reverse T3. And it was connected back to some, some insulin resistance. And I was tracking it all. I was working with a functional doctor, but I had all the labs in a spreadsheet. And even though I didn't understand them all, I was a tech nerd. but my doctor was telling me what they mean and he, he'd say, okay, we're going to put you on this supplement protocol for three months. We're going to put some selenium in there and, and some, some ashwagandha herbs and some other things. And then we're going to retest and we're going to see if these numbers move up and down. And, and I had the numbers and it was, it was kind of fun. Yeah. It was like, okay, this is interesting. And we were able to, to really, it, it got me way, way more engaged first yeah. of all. And that yeah. was, that was a win. And, uh, yeah, there's there's all those reasons like you described where this information, I don't know why society ha has gotten to this point where, where we haven't had this information as individuals, but for whatever reason we have. And now I think it's starting to change. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I had had your tool 10 years ago, I probably myself wouldn't have been misdiagnosed with hypothyroidism for over 10 years. It's suffering, needlessly oh, suffering, man. right? Just like you. And it was like everybody just kept saying, everything's fine. Your labs are fine. They weren't fine. Yeah. I, I had a really close family member misdiagnosed with MS. And we just found out last week after like 20 years of being on experimental drugs. No. And it's like, and we figured it out ourselves. You know, and it wasn't even it wasn't even the medical uh, establishment. So, um, yeah, there's that part of it. And then I also want to mention that there's this whole idea of of quantified self and and biohackers and and people who are are generally healthy and they have insurance in case they get run over by a bus. But but they're they're mostly interested in ways to optimize. Yeah. And so they're using this data to say, how do I go from being healthy to like optimal numbers and they're biohacking 
and they're doing all the things to like feel better and perform better in whatever their career is and and be a better human being spiritually and emotionally and for their family and and learning how to self-regulate stress and so there's also this other side of the coin which is like okay now I'm good how do I get to great and then beyond and work on longevity and anti-aging and stuff like that so that's the other side of it which is like the high performance side of it which I think is great. Yeah. Like I was listening to Dave Asprey and Joseph Mer- Mercola the other day talking about how they, you know, they want to live forever and they, you know, they want to, this, they're like ultimate biohackers and they're, you know, trying all these wacko things like Joseph Mercola was talking about putting these suppositories in every couple of days. I can't even remember what it was because it helped him live longer. <laughs> like it just went on. I'm like, oh, they, they need, they need this. Offer. You guys go test that out <laughs> and uh, you let us know. No, I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't, I don't care that much. I can't do it. Sorry guys. Uh, but there are, there's, it's a growing movement. The biohacking movement is totally huge. It's I mean, awesome. It's Dave so Asprey fun. has one of the biggest podcasts and that just says like how many people are interested in living longer, living better, optimizing their health and doing everything they can to do it. So this is a way to track it. So I just want to, before we wrap things up, the, sure. your software integrates with more than 20,000 hospitals and healthcare systems across the country, like the Mayo Clinic, mm-hmm. Stanford Health System, the Cleveland Clinic. It provides full data integration with labs and pharmacies, including Walgreens, CVS, Quest Diagnostics, LabCorp, and it syncs up perfectly with health tracking apps such as Apple Health, Google Fit, Fitbit, MyFitnessPal, and Garmin, which is, that, that's pretty amazing, over 20,000. Um, where can, can, so anyone can get this on any app store or are you just on Apple? What, what, no, we're on both. Yeah. Um, you know, our, uh, our Android app, Android's a hard platform to build for. So that one's a little bit further behind where our Apple platform is just because with Android, there's no standardization from all these different phone manufacturers. With Apple, you write your code once and it's guaranteed to run almost perfectly on every iPhone. Yeah. With Android, it's way harder. You have to test it on every different phone, Samsung, LG, oh. and every flavor of Android. They're all so nuanced. It, for a startup, it's really hard. So the iOS app's a little further along, but nonetheless, everything we talked about works on Android as well. It's just, it's still got a little bit more to go in terms of maturity. And then the best way to use Heads Up is from your uh, desktop or laptop web browser, because that's where you really see how powerful the data is when you have the screen real estate to look at 10 years of your TSH numbers. And that's just hard to do on a phone. And how do I run a report that has my TSH numbers and my blood sugar on it over the last year? So the best way to get started is, is just sign in from your desktop or laptop browser create your account, get your stuff stitched up. It's free for 30 days. You can use all the bells and whistles. You don't have to put a credit card in. It's low pressure. And then if you like it, you can you can buy a subscription plan. So uh, I'd, I'd say start on the web. It's at headsuphealth.com. And um, you know I'm reachable anytime. I'm Dave at headsuphealth.com. If you have questions about how things work or security or anything like that, just shoot me an email. And can, are you able to share your screen for those that are watching and we're at the oh, end cool. of our show here? I'd love just to sh- show a little peek inside of it. And those that are listening yeah, on the podcast, no they can always go check it out and they'll know that it's at the end of the video that we show um, a sample. of. All right. Like. Well, I guess I'm going on record here. I got to show my numbers on the air. Uh Oh, Oh boy, man, I can't be a poser and show just, up with like all these bad numbers. You just That's imagine cool. what your numbers are if you're from Winnipeg, Dave. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it means I'm killing it. <laughs> it means I'm killing it. I was telling Dave that okay. really we used to be drinking pals, the, the British Columbias and the Winnipeggers we're, you know, back in the day, so yeah. we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're tight crew. Yeah. yeah, definitely tight crew. Can you see this? Yes, I can. Yeah, perfect. So the first thing people do is they sign up and we'll ask you to connect up your Apple watch and your scale and your Fitbit. And if you have a glucometer and so you see the first couple tiles, the first one is my blood sugar. Now we're in the U S so it's milligrams per deciliter, but um, in Canada you can change it to settings. So it's millimoles per liter, but this is my most recent reading and I've got ways to track my historical readings and I can just enter the data manually if I don't have a, a connected glucometer and, this is arguably one of the most important metrics everyone should learn yep. and, and learn how to eat 
and live in a way that keeps your blood sugar down. That's like, you know, self-preservation number, uh, metric number one is yep. blood glucose. And I'd say like self-preservation metric number two is like your sleep. Yeah. And there's some pretty amazing technology out there. The Ura Ring, uh, the BioStrap, the Fitbit, the Garmin. These get pretty accurate. They know exactly when you went to bed, exactly when you woke up, you know, plus or minus a few minutes. And the really sophisticated ones that can also measure heart rate, they're also able to give you some good data on like the time in each sleep state. So you can see last night I went to bed at 9.53, woke up at 7.16, got a really, really restful sleep. So that would be like super important metric number two. Um, here's another one, fasting. A lot of people are doing intermittent fasting now. Yeah. And you can record a fasting interval, see how your blood sugar changes during the fast. And then the the Apple Watch is feeding my steps in. And I've got some metrics for heart rate variability, which is basically stress. Uh, meditation. There's a bunch in here, and you just add the body and take temperature, away. or you can add your own, anyways, right? Because I always get clients oh, to track have... their body temperature. Yeah. So here's an example. I would just click the plus button, and I would find um, basal body temperature on here, yeah, yeah. which is somewhere in here. Basal temp, and add it to my dashboard. And let's say you're asking a client to track this for a week. They just wake up in the morning, pop the number in, and yeah. um, Nice. So that's part one. Part two is, is the blood tests. And so here's all my labs going all the way back to 2005. Oh my God, so, so much. I don't care what doctor I see. I know more about my labs than anybody. And again, I'm not a medical professional, but I know enough to look at a Do you guys have um, stuff on here that helps people to interpret their own labs? Like, um, you know how when you go get blood work done, it'll be like all these uh, abbreviations that nobody knows what it is. Do you guys have yeah. something that helps people to know what those things are or no? Yeah, we write a lot of blogs on this. You can also click on a test. Like if I click on total cholesterol, uh, it's going to give me a nice little description of what the test means, what the reference ranges are. Perfect. It's going to show me the trend of all my values so you can learn about the number. And uh, there's ways to create reports. So I could run a report that says, show me my blood sugar, my weight, and my thyroid TSH over the last six months. Wow. And with a couple clicks, I could just share that with my doctor. Because, you know, a lot of people are c collecting data at home. The doctor wants to know what's your blood sugar readings at home. And, yeah, you could write it down on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet, oh, but it's Dave, way better to have more. I could show you, I have it on my notes on my phone. I have mm -hmm. an entire year's worth of basal body temperature, my heart rate, my blood pressure, um, my thyroid. Like, I, I have it just in there very haphazardly, not even on a graph or anything, just to try, just because it's easiest for me is to track it on that. But if so, uh, anyways, I'm sold. Yeah, you could, just, <laughs> you, you could do that through our mobile app and now it's trendable and reportable and trackable and shareable and stuff like wow. that. So at a high level, that's how it works. And then if you're a health coach, you can um, connect to your clients to the system and set up their dashboard and say, okay, I want you measuring basal temperature, blood sugar, and once a month, I want you to do a waist circumference measurement. Take your scale, throw it in the garbage. We're not using that. Yeah. And um, just give them like just three things to track. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a ton on mine because I'm, I'm, I'm testing the software. But you can scope it down. And you can see here, here's my family members. I have access to their medical history in seconds if there's an emergency. So, you know, family members, health, clients, that's, that's how the, the coaching part of it works. So, wow. um Great. Yeah, that's, that's the system. Yeah. I love it. Great. So any, any last words? Like, I think it's excellent. Yeah. Well, no, I think we're, we've got a lot more work to do. We're, mm -hmm. there's so much more with that yeah. what we want to build here. And um, we really just, above all, we want to empower people to understand this information and we want to allow them to find the right professional who can give them the care they need and have access to that data. It might be a conventional doctor. It might be someone who understands microbiome. It might be, who knows? But mm. if you have the information, you can do the work you need to do because it's all an N equals one at the end of the day. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the information yeah. and I hope people yeah, take pleasure. advantage of this. Yeah, thanks. Always nice to jam with yeah. a fellow Canadian and uh, someone who has the same hairstyle as me. So um, 
Mine's a bit yeah, better. It was but awesome. That's okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Fine. Okay. I'll give you that one. <laughs> okay. You got me. <laughs> okay, Dave. Thanks so much. Yes.